Welcome to Across Africa, our weekly look at stories from across the continent. I'm Georgia Calvin-Smith, and this week he is an inspiration for many scientists. Congolese microbiologist Professor Jean-Jacques Muyembe heads up his country's National Institute for Biomedical Research and has spearheaded monumental breakthroughs in the treatment of Ebola. Also, we turn up and tune in to the message of Gambian musician Mariama Chama. She is a rare female voice in a male-dominated industry and has been winning fans at home and abroad. And young Nigerian visionaries pit their wits against each other to come up with new ways of tackling old but ever important problems. We get the lowdown on their tech creations. But first, in 2017, Benin launched a school meals program to help keep children in education. Since then, the project has proved to be a huge success and has been scaled up. Our correspondents report. On her first day of school, Eliam makes her final preparations. This year, she'll no longer need to travel for miles to get lunch, thanks to the school's new canteen. She now has more time and energy to focus on her schoolwork, which had a positive impact on her grades. Her academic level has changed. She's now among the top five students in the class, which was not the case before. And since the canteen's opening in the school, located in Ungad, southwestern Benin, the number of enrollments has surged. The student body has increased by over 25 percent. Parents are relieved when they know their children can have at least one hot meal a day at school. 75 percent of state schools in Benin today have access to canteens, almost three times higher than in 2017, when the project started. The main focus of this government-led initiative is to provide food access to children from disadvantaged backgrounds. We saw that school dropouts were becoming a prevalent issue, with one of the biggest causes being the family's financial difficulties. These difficulties lead to children being unable to continue their education due to a lack of food and nutrition. With the help of the World Food Program, the government aims to provide food for all schools by 2026. School gardens and local producers supply the canteen with food while local partners monitor the rations. Benin is currently considered a model, not only in Africa, but also globally when it comes to school meals. Many countries would benefit from sharing these experiences, so these are ongoing processes. The primary school dropout rate in Benin fell by 4% since the introduction of school canteens. Across Africa, more than 30% of harvests are lost to pests and disease. To offset those losses and improve food security on the continent, a team of Ghanaian engineers are working on using drones on farms to identify risks to crops early. Our West African correspondent reports. Theophilus Edujemfi lost more than half of his maize farm when Ghana faced a major invasion of fall armyworm pests five years ago. They eat the floral part of the maize even before they get to the maturity stage. So the plant wouldn't be able to give the maximum crop because the crop is what you get the, the yield from. Uh -huh. So most of the plant will go usually, but the yield that you expect from the crop as big as my hand, you will not get it. Darlington Akogo and his team of engineers went across the country to find out from farmers about how to identify pests even before they developed into bigger threats to crop yields. The innovation gives the GPS coordinate of where the pests are so farmers can cut the hours spent manually in looking for diseases on farms. So you want to be able to use technology to understand each plant, understand what they want, and then provide it for them. So that's where, you know, the drones and AI system come in. We can tell each plant, is it diseased or not? And then you respond to it accordingly. Uh, let's see if what the AI system has discovered. But these two trees clearly have serious... Artificial intelligence seems to be cutting down the workload for farmers. And yet, in many parts of Africa, its use on farms remains low. At the University of Ghana, 
crop scientists have been working for years to understand how to maximize agricultural yields and developing new plant breeds that would withstand diseases. Rita Akwele Ajay is a lead researcher here. On average, it takes you between um, eight to ten years to be able to develop one uh, variety that you can call well-developed and ready to be sent out to the market. But artificial intelligence helps us to shorten the uh, number of years. The move from old forms of farming to the use of AI has become even more urgent to sustain food systems in many countries already facing food insecurity. Professor Jean-Jacques Muyembe is a scientific icon in DR Congo. In the 70s, he was part of the team that discovered the Ebola virus. Since then, he's led Congo's fight against COVID and the monkeypox epidemic. He's also an inspiration for the next generation of Congolese biologists, and one of his most ardent supporters has made the professor's career the subject of his latest book, our correspondent's report. Michel Mouvoudi flicks through the precious collection in his library. There is one book that he is particularly proud of, the one that he wrote. Jean-Jacques Muyembe, an inspirational person. This is a 136-page book. It's a biography of Jean-Jacques Muyembe, a famous virologist in the Democratic Republic of Congo, who helped discover the Ebola virus in the 1970s. I told myself this would be a good opportunity to highlight a role model, someone who could serve as an example to young people to show that you can succeed through effort and sacrifice in this country. The two men met at this research institute in Kinshasa. Professor Muyembe has been running his lab here for 25 years, and it's become something of a second home. <laughs> Highly respected by his peers, the professor has been called upon to coordinate the response to several epidemics, including Ebola and then COVID-19. He is now also leading the charge against the spread of the monkeypox virus. But the 81-year-old says that his most important battle is now to train the next generation of scientists. I'm no longer alone. There are 30 of us now, specialized in a variety of diseases like sleeping sickness or malaria. To have a place like this in a country like this one, it's quite something. The institute has state-of-the-art equipment and expert staff who are proud of the work that they do alongside the professor. He has enabled us to have many partnerships and to train in new techniques. If we hadn't developed like this, we would be behind and we wouldn't be at the level we are at now. Their rigorous efforts have already paid off and have led to the rise of Congolese scientific expertise in tropical diseases crucial knowledge that boosts the country's ability to respond to more public health emergencies. In the Gambia, rising star Mariama Chama is carving a path for herself in an industry largely dominated by men. The singer's lyrics champion causes such as gender equality and climate consciousness and have struck a chord with audiences across the region and beyond. Our team reports. <laughs> At just 20 years old, Mariama Cham is a rising star of the Gambian music scene. Her distinctive blend of traditional, reggae and rap influences has earned her critical acclaim, but the singer says her mission is bigger than that. I've been doing music uh, as long as I remember. One thing I know how to do is to sing, and I decided to use my voice in a meaningful way to impact the world. And that's what music means to me. Mariama's music engages with societal issues like female genital mutilation, human trafficking and climate change. Outside the studio too, Mariama is an activist. She set up this youth group in her neighborhood and mentors dozens of young children and teenagers. They are the future of tomorrow, and that, that they need to know. They need to know how important they are in the community, they need to know how important they are in the society, they need to know how important they are in the world. In packed venues across the Gambia and beyond, Mariama's sharp songwriting and striking voice have won over fans. She's someone that, that really knows the craft, 
Um, she, has, she has learned a lot along the line, and she's definitely someone uh, to look out for, especially from the smiling coast of West Africa. She's young, she's cool, but she's still deeply, deeply rooted in the oldest, oldest traditions that you could come across. Mariama will soon record her first complete studio album and, if her followers are to be believed, is destined for greatness. And finally, young visionaries in Nigeria have been pitting their wits against each other in a bid to come up with new ways of tackling old but ever important problems. Students have been challenged to come up with ethical uses of tech in a way that can help their communities. Take a look. Focus, meticulous, every detail is carefully studied. This team of young scientists have developed a smart composting system capable of transforming food waste into fertilizer. Our project is an Arduino-based smart compost system. It was fabricated with a grinding and a mixing machine. As Nigeria grapples with significant food shortages, the team believes the innovation could have profound implications. What this project does is that it gets organic waste, like our foods, our wasted foods, grass, sportium, all sort of wasted foods. David Uchendu and his team are part of a new generation of Nigerians who are putting technology at the service of agriculture. A generation brought to light thanks to an annual innovation prize that rewards young scientists. We have many tech talents that Africa can take advantage of, and our own work is to go and identify them, train them, and put them back into the economy. <laughs> This year, David and his team received the prize and a cheque for 200,000 naira, over $260, and a laptop computer. Enough to motivate the winners. This is an encouragement for us as Kingdom Tech. I will work towards more projects because of this amazing, like we are, we are, kind, we are happy about it. Oh, well done, kids. That is though, all we have time for for Across Africa for now, but join us again if you can. Till then, take care.